Times like these, we find the mercies of God to be something that works like nothing else can do. We can comfort one another, we can uphold one another, and that we ought to do. But in times like this, we have to rely on somebody so much greater than we are. I think that God gave us, all of us, the ability to have compassion on one another just for times like these. Irregardless of what may have been or what is, we look to one another for support and strength and courage that we may look not to the now, but to the future that what we have then will be better than what we have now. 
I want to read the obituary this morning. I, I'm not going to try to read all of it. But I, I think that these are some of the more important parts of it. We're here today to celebrate and remember Linnell Higgs Murray Smirnoff. And if I pronounce your names incorrectly, y'all forgive me for it. She passed away June 7th, 2019, <coughs> after a long battle with cancer. She was 70, born June 20th, 1948, to the late Osley, or Olsey, excuse me, and Lucille Higgs. She was the youngest of four children. Lunell was preceded in death by her husband, Richard Spirinoff, Brothers James Higgs, two sisters, Darlene, Darlene, Darlene Brown, excuse me, and she leaves behind her daughter, Bonnie Lee Ricks of Jacksonville, Florida, son Thomas <laughs> William Murray Jr., and Tammy McKenzie. Oh, Me Meepin? Mubbin. okay. <laughs> of North Carolina, and grandson, Corey Ricks, and Sel Selsky? Celeste. Celeste. That's a, like I said, I asked for <coughs> <laughs> Williams of Jacksonville, Florida. Lunell was a very was very excited and looking forward to being a great grandmother in October to Aurora uh -huh. Rose. That's what grandmothers do. <laughs> yes. They get excited about the coming events of their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. In this, she was like all of us. There are just certain things in this world that get up, uh, grab our attention and hold it and makes us to take and, and rejoice over what God has given us. And it's a wonderful thing that the Lord has done. How that he has enriched our lives through children. I look around this hour and I see all of the people that are here and I read the list of names of people that maybe aren't here. But the reality is that in her lifetime, God blessed her, made her fruitful, multiply. The joys of those children coming forth and the relationship that she had with them and the knowledge of them is what really makes life worth living <coughs> in the hour in which we live. So anyhow, this morning I want to go ahead before I get started with the little sermon. And I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for all of us. So there's one thing I know. Christ still answers prayer. Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given us in life. The opportunities to know one another, to have relationships and to share loving kindness with one another, to know and to understand that the grace of God has been applied to our lives. Sometimes we may be blind to it and not see what it is and not recognize what it will do, but the reality is that your mercy has abounded toward humanity. I ask you this hour, Lord, to take and touch us here in this hour to strengthen each of us Lord, together that we might rejoice in what you and you alone have done and can do. <coughs> I ask you this hour, Lord, to take and touch the lives of those who mourn, to strengthen the hearts of those who have taken and suffered loss, to reach down to our hearts and encourage us, to make us to know what it is to have hope in you. Lord, I ask you this morning, Lord, to bless these that are here and even those that aren't here this morning. Help us, Lord, that we may take and go through this time together 
And that at the end of this time together, we will find an uplift in you that we did not know before this time of coming together in sorrow. But it may be turned into joy. And I'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I understand that whenever, uh, do you need to find seats? You can come on up and, and, and be seated if you will. And this time together, <coughs> we've taken, and, and you've lived, some of you have lived very close with the sorrows and the heartaches and the troubles of her passing. You've seen the suffering that goes with having cancer. And we look at it and no man really wants to take and see someone else suffer through all of the agonies that do come with it. But can I say to you this morning what my sister said to me years ago. My father passed with a struggle with cancer. But my sister said God is merciful <coughs> because in the struggle with that kind of disease, there is time that is given to the person that has it that they might take and examine their lives Amen. Amen. and they might see their relationship with God and they may call out to him and find the mercy that he would give. The disease is a terrible thing, yes, but there is even a good side to that. Yes, amen. So when we look at it this morning, we find that the hope that it gives to us takes and outweighs the bad that it gives <coughs> to us. I want to take and read out of the book of Psalms, number 39, verse 4. The psalmist simply says, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measures of my days, that it that are, excuse me, are what it is that I may know how frail I am. We look at our lives this morning and we take and have a consistent thought, most of us, that we do have troubles and we have strifes that we face and things that we have to overcome. But we think that we are able to take and face whatever may happen in ourselves. I think oftentimes of the portrayal that Hollywood has put forth into the world in which we live of a John Wayne type of character that he just takes and bulls his way through whatever problem comes along. But I can tell you this morning that all of us come to a point where that our frailties will overtake us. Whenever the measure of our lives has been made and we begin to come to a point where that in ourselves we understand that we just don't have what it takes to overcome some things. But we also understand that the grace of God that is applied unto the lives of men is able to come and help us in our time of need. I face cancer in my life. And I know what it is to be able to lay in the bed at night and look and say, Oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, my life in your life. And whether I live or whether I die, I'll worship you yes, amen. and give you glory. Amen. It's important this morning to recognize that there is a secure hope and feel that comes into a life that only God can give in times like that. Whenever you realize that I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know who God is, and I do know I can trust him with whatever happens. This hour, that's exactly what we look at. Lunell took and come to that place in her life. God gave her time. God gave her an opportunity to take and call out and to put her trust in him and to see the result that he gave. We look at it this morning as being lost. To us it is lost. To you that are very close to her or lost. You look at it and say, there's something great missing out of my life. But the reality is it was to her gain. 
It was to her hope, to her strength, to her courage that the Lord had come into the place of helping her. I'm told that she made all things right. So there's something to be said about that. Having a right life, having one that depends not on what men can do or what I can do, but what Christ will do. John's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he asked the question, <coughs> believest thou this? It comes to a point in our personal lives of being able to take and recognize what we believe and what we rely on in our lives. How that I myself may prepare me that I may be ready at the time whenever my crossing comes. We look around this morning and as glim as it, uh, glum as it seems to be. Glim is the word I love. We look at it and we recognize that every man, woman, and child sitting here has an appointment. And we'll keep that appointment. We're not going to be able to pass it by and say, later, the time will come when all of us will face our immortality. We'll take and recognize then that in our life we've had times where we have made great and grievous errors. But there is a hope. Yes. And that hope lies in Jesus Christ this morning that it takes and reaches to my heart and to your heart and gives us an opportunity that when we call on him and when we ask of him, that he's not just simply going to pass us by, but he's going to offer us the opportunity. That we come to a place where that in this opportunity we'll find the hope of God arising in our own heart, <coughs> in our own life. It's not a a promise that is given to us with a falsehood or an emptiness. There's a lot of false promises in the world in which we live. There's a lot of things that are told to men that is to supposedly reassure them. But the end result is that they cannot confirm what their promise is. But in Jesus Christ this morning, there is that assurance that we find. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, but now, now, not some hope in the future, not some hope in something else, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of, he that's, or of them that slept, excuse me, it is a matter that whenever we look at it, that Christ has taken and led the way. When he was born into this world, he came in as no other man has ever come. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, in Mary's womb. And when he was born into this world, he was born in half man and half God. It was the, the epitome of the hope that we have when we come to the place where that we understand and recognize that no ordinary man can offer us this. No ordinary person can deliver this. But took Christ, the Son of a living God, excuse me, the living God, to take and bring to us this hope. The builders rejected him. They didn't want him to be what he was. They just wanted things as they were. But nothing, hear me this morning, nothing remains the same when Christ comes into our Amen. life. Everything begins to change. On death's bed, there was something that changed in her heart and in her life. <coughs> and looking forward to that time, she didn't look to a place where 
of agony and dread and fear was waiting, but she looked to a place where the promise of God was at. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it means something to be able to look forward to that place. Yes. To have a hope in a world that is so full of distress and so little hope. It is an important thing for us this morning to recognize that that hope is not lost, but it is found every day. Every day, somebody is finding that hope. That's right. I don't know how you feel in your life or how your life has been. Maybe, maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have to do this right now. <clears throat> but let me assure you, the clock is ticking and the time is rolling on. And one thing that I found out in my young life when I got saved was this. I looked around and said, why did I wait so long? Amen. I was a young man, but why did I wait so long? I could have gotten saved years before. And so much of my life would have been truly different had I took advantage of what Christ offered back then. <coughs> but thank God I didn't wait so long that it passed me by Amen. and I lost my opportunity. Also in 1 Corinthians 15 and 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. Amen. There is a victory to be won. And that victory is in Christ Jesus. Yes. I don't know when my time will be. I know I'm getting over. I know I don't have the days I once had. But I know one thing. I know in whom I have trusted and believed. Rosaline looked at it and she looked and realized who she trusted and believed. And in trusting and in believing, faith came into her heart. And the life that she lived was the life that Christ blessed even unto the end. And not just to the end but through the end. One day that resurrection will come. It's getting ever closer. And it's important for us to recognize, I often think about years ago, Charles Snipes preached a sermon at Southside Church. And he preached it on the roll call of the saints. How many of those saints have taken and gone on to be with the Lord? Oh, but one day, one day we'll awaken together and never have to worry again. Just because life ends in this world doesn't mean that life doesn't go on. Amen. Eternal life is there for the asking and it's there for the taking. I believe you this. She knew this. And she reached out and grabbed hold of it and held on to it. It's up to each of us to reach out and grab hold on to it and allow it to take and be a part of our life. I believe it was William Shakespeare and the Julius Caesar made a statement that said the deeds that men do live after them. I look around this morning and I see a family that was touched by the deeds that she did in her life. they are never really gone away. For we see it in our life in our life, we see how that it affects us. The teachings, the loving kindness, the compassion, all of those attributes that are there of a grandmother 
mother and great grandmother. They reach down to us and out to us. And we can see ourselves in those who taught us and those who have influenced us in our life. She <coughs> didn't just go away, but she left a part of herself with you <coughs> and to you. Everybody knows that the greatest gift of all is the gift of a grandmother's love. Yeah. You know, mothers love their children, but when grandma comes to the house, <laughs> it's a different story. Yeah. I guess it's because grandmas can get away with spoiling children and then leave them behind. Grandpas too. Amen. Amen. But the important thing, but the important thing is that there is something that is left behind. Yeah. We come to celebrate this in this opportunity that we have. That are knowing that our lives and your lives are enriched because of what this one person did. It's an amazing thing. We go through our lives day by day and never really consider what our influences are on other people. That's true. We, we, never, we never really come to that place where we take and think about how that other people are looking at us and seeing us <coughs> and what it's influencing in them. But it's there. And it gives us a little bit of comfort knowing that it's there. And it reaches down to the depths of our heart. This morning, I don't want to hold you. This is a solemn time. This is a time of family and reflection. All the deeds that she did in her life are done. Is now waiting to the faithful judgment of Christ. And so whenever we come together, we look at it and recognize that he is faithful. And in that faithfulness, we can have some assurance in our own hearts and in our own lives. This morning, I encourage you to take her loving example and see that there is a hope beyond this world. And there's a hope beyond the life that we live. That there is another life that is given to us and strengthens us and encourages us to get up and to go on. To find what she found and to live in what she lived in. This morning, my hope for each of you is that you would comfort one another, but also and especially that Christ would comfort you. That your hearts may be able to take and overcome the sadness yeah. with the knowledge of the grace of God that touches you. Would you bow your heads one more time? <coughs> Father, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, that you reach down your hands to us and stir our heart and help us, O oh Lord, to recognize that even in sorrows like these, we are not alone. And we're not just taking and facing them, but in each of our lives and in each of these times, that if we turn to you and call upon you and trust in you, that you alone would help us like no one else would. I ask you this morning, Lord God, to take and pour your spirit out here in this place and in this time to help us to think about our mortality, to think about what we are in this world, to know the end of our days and to consider our ways and the life that we've lived and that no matter how we live, sooner or later, we come to the end of that life. I ask you this morning, O oh Lord God, to deal with every heart, to speak peace, but yes, to deal Lord. with every heart, to let them come to a place where that they may call upon your name, trust in your promise, and walk according, O oh God, to your commandment. I ask you to bless this morning, touch each one, 
And Lord, we'll ask it in Jesus' holy name this day. Amen. Amen. So you ask everyone, maybe just to stay in here for a minute till we get. Um, oh, we're finishing up with Amazing Grace. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. <clears throat> and let's get pictures uh, before we go out there to, to eat. <laughs> 